How's it going out there everybody? Gun Psychiatrist here. Sorry I haven't posted any videos here lately, but I've been super swamped. Finally got some time this weekend to catch up on some projects I've been putting off for a while and I wanted to share those projects with you. So what is it that we have here today? Well, we have a 300 Win Mag barrel from a Remington 770 and well, like most guns that don't get cleaned or that are made very, very cheaply, there's some problems going on inside the barrel. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I found when I bore scoped this thing. And so what you're seeing here is the inside of the bore. On the left side is the unclean version and on the right side is after I've run a patch with some cleaning solution through the bore. The first thing you're already noticing everywhere is all the circumferential marring and impressions inside the barrel. Um, on the right hand side of the screen you should see little white spots. Those little white spots um, are actually pretty deep little pits that have been created in the bore. Um, over here on the left you're actually seeing a little bit of copper fouling. But you're also seeing a white ceramic like dust which naturally occurs in pretty much all firearms when you shoot them. But right there you just saw a really nice gouge. Over here on the right you're still seeing you're starting to see some excessive wearing uh, from shooting over that white dust. Again, we're seeing massive amounts of these burrs, which is probably from the button rifling. Now over here on the left, you're actually seeing a little rust spot uh, where you're seeing severe rust and pitting on the left side of that land. And of course, there's a nice deep impression on top of that land right next to it as well. Um, that's that's pretty serious. Again, on the right, we're just continuing to move up the board here. And uh, same story. Lots of these wear marks from the, either the gun drill or the, the button when this board was rifled. Here we have a nice scratch on one of the lands. So that barrel was tore up from the floor up but there is light at the end of the muzzle. There are things we can do to help improve the conditions inside this bore. One of the biggest things that you saw was the circumferential tooling marks and burrs, especially around the throat area. There was a lot of circumferential burrs and tooling marks from where the chamber reamer went in at the manufacturer. What you also saw was all those circumferential tooling marks running entirely through that barrel from the gun drilling operations. That's standard. There's not too much you can do, but it shouldn't look like that. That is a clear sign and indication that Remington is running their gun drills so fast. They're removing so much metal rapidly to save time. Time equals money, and the Remington 770 is a cheap gun. So the faster they can make those barrels, the cheaper the guns can get at the sacrifice of accuracy because those burrs are going to cause problems. They're going to cause extreme fouling, which we didn't really see too much evidence of because this gun had not been fired that much, but they're still going to cause extreme fouling over time. And it's probably going to cause some issues with accuracy. Like I said, there's a light at the end of the muzzle. There are things that can be done to improve this. And that's what we're going to do today. There's several types of lapping that can be done on any firearm. The first type is known as what is fire lapping, where projectiles are impregnated with a fine aluminum oxide powder 
and the bullet is rolled on that and that powder sticks into that soft copper. It's loaded in the casing and then subsequent grits are shot down the bore to essentially accomplish a lapping process. With the fire, the heat, the steel, gets a, the steel can become a little bit more softer at those higher temperatures. And as that bullet's going down, it's removing micro amounts of metal out of the barrel, smoothing over lands, smoothing over burrs, removing tooling marks, and of course, making the bore fully concentric throughout. So where you might measure certain areas of the bore that might have a, dilly, a, a difference of five millionths of an inch in diameter, it's gonna make that fully concentric all the way through. That does contribute to accuracy. There's also using a hand lap. And a hand lap is constructed from casted lead that is poured down the bore onto some type of an attachment, which can be a jag, it can be a patch jag. It's poured down the bore, it solidifies, and of course the operator or the gunsmith that's doing the lapping would take a lapping compound such as a valve lapping paste, uh, various grits. Usually if the bore is really bad, we'll start off with 180 to 220 grit and work our way up to 6, 800 to 1200, somewhere in there. That lapping is going to remove any type of burrs, most circumferential tooling marks and burrs. And of course, if there's any sharp points on the lands or, or areas that might be uh, maybe a nick on the land, it can remove that as well. It's not going to remove everything. And of course, you're going to have some barrels that are so bad that this is going to help, but it might not help all the time. Or the barrel just might be on its way out towards replacement. Either way, the hand lapping process is not only used by gunsmiths, it's used by some of the best world-renowned barrel makers to make high-end barrels. A hand lap barrel is probably one of the most accurate barrels out there that you can shoot on a rifle. The other way barrels are lapped is through a machine process. There's very expensive machines that will actually do much of the lapping for the company that's making the barrel. And of course, it only helps by speeding up the process. But like with any machine out there, time is money. And of course, those machines are expensive and it's gonna cost. So what we wanna focus on today is what you can do at home to improve barrel accuracy. Now, with that being said, as I'm gonna show you this process, I wanna put this disclaimer out there to everybody. Lapping your barrel is not to be done for light and transient causes. You need to have a reason that it needs to be done. Of course, severe pitting is a reason. Severe tooling marks inside your bore is absolutely a reason. Don't just go lapping your barrel because you think it's gonna make it more accurate. That's the biggest mistake that a lot of people can make. For example, if you're shooting sub MOA groups with a barrel and you say, hmm, I wanna lap it, don't do it. If you're shooting nine inch groups at 100 yards with a barrel, lapping can probably help your barrel. It's not going to work every time. It can help the precision of the barrel. Accuracy is a human factor that not all gunsmiths can control, but we can control precision. And so what you're going to see today is how to cast a lap, run it through the bore, and what you're feeling for and what you're doing. One more thing before we get started. Never, never, never use diamond lapping paste. I know they're all over Amazon and they sound great. Oh, you can get them in 200,000 grit. That's great. And I'm sure diamond lapping compound and polishing compounds can do phenomenal polishing work. I've seen it too. Here's the problem with diamond lapping compounds. Diamonds are the hardest material on the planet. Granted, they're going to remove metal, but they're going to also embed themselves into metal. And the last thing you want is diamonds embedded in your bore because it is going to create a horribly fouling rifle barrel. So do not use diamond lapping paste. Let's stick to the basics of aluminum oxide or silicon carbide. That stuff works fine. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So you need to wrap the end of your rod right before the attachment that's going to hold the lead for the lap. You need to wrap it with like a cotton twine. What this does is this prevents lead from leaching past this point. Wrap it pretty tight. 
just wrap it around your rod. And go back the other way. Just like that. Once you have this on, carefully insert it into your bore guide. You're gonna feel a little pressure and just run it through. Now you have this sticking out. That's what you want. And you can see we got a nice barrier in there to seal up when we pour, go to cast and pour the uh, lap. What's going to happen is because this barrel is cold. Now some people choose to put a torch on the barrel. It's going to heat up just the same. I want to get it about the same temperature of the lead. So I'll end up casting about three or four different lead laps before I get this hot enough and I get a nice good solid lap. After you run it down about four inches, just hold this at an angle. Bring it up till lead runs out of it. Try not to be too rough on the crown. And you can push it out and see that it didn't hold very well because we're trying to get it hot. So just rinse and repeat. We'll just keep doing this until we get a nice looking lap here. Just let it go. You, you're not... Yeah, just melt it. You also stick the edge of the barrel in the lead to help kind of... Uh, warm it up because this lead's about 600 degrees right now so it'll help warm the barrel up a little bit as you can see it's not very well defined just yet we want to get a really good definition Now we got a good deal. So the lead I can see is still somewhat liquid in that barrel. So we're going to let that just sit and cure up. Alright, so the lap is now constructed. If you see what it looks like, you can see the very good profile of the lands and grooves. So now all So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to get some oil in the barrel. We'll just put a light coat of oil on this and run it back. When you normally start lapping your barrel, depending on what's in it, um, you might have some serious pits or some scratches on your land, some scratches in the grooves, what have you. You're going to start with various grits of valve lapping compound. Uh, clover grease is great, uh, which has like a silicon carbide in it that's used to uh, lap with. You can also use any type of uh, lapping compound from Brownells or, or whatever you find out there. I would avoid using any type of diamond containing material because the diamonds will stick inside the barrel and that's going to cause you a ton of problems. At the end of the day, this barrel has already been, pretty much been lapped up to 600 grits. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to take this polishing paste because I'm just trying to get a polish on the bore now. So I started out at about 180 and worked up to 600. So now I just want to get a nice, good looking polish inside the barrel. So we're just going to drag it back and forth. So what we're going for... as we're lapping and polishing this barrel is we're trying to feel the consistency of the lap going through the bore. Because especially when it's cutting grit, one of the things it's doing is it's straightening out as the barrel, you know, as the drill, the gun drill is going through this barrel, it can make wider spots or shallower spots that are probably measured in about millionths of an inch or up to five millionths of an inch. In some cases it might be larger or smaller. What that's doing is, is evening out the entire bore, the circumference of the bore, all the way through. And you can feel this as you're running the lap. You can definitely feel 
spots where it's a little harder to go, where it might be a little flow a little smoother, but you want consistent pressure all the way up and down. You know, be careful because your transition points are going to create wear points. So without removing the lap from the board, and if you ever do remove the lap from the board, you want to recast a new lap. But those transition points, you got to be careful because you don't want to build up too much and remove too much metal from those transition points. So the front at the crown obviously is going to be a transition point, And as it comes to the rearward, the throat area is going to be a transition point. Of course, you don't want to wear away too much of the throat area. But this is a last resort that's done to actually save a barrel. And because this one had a lot of pitting in it, that's what we're trying to do. And for the polishing, I just keep adding an application of oil. And so another consideration to keep in mind while you're lapping. I would not, especially in polishing, and uh, I would avoid actually putting anything in a vise on your barrel or the parts that are going to have the lap running through it. Um, when I used to work at Keltec and I, I'd rifle the barrels there is what I started off doing. And you know, when that button goes through the barrel, you could actually hold your hand over that metal and feel it expand the barrel. And you could literally watch it run down the barrel as it's rifling it. And um, the reason I say that is I know this is super tough steel, but I think you want to be very careful because if you put a little too much pressure on your vise while you're lapping in the board, you could lap a almost like a choke spot into your rifling or into your barrel. So that's just one precaution I would suggest that you use is clamp it over the receiver area and not over the barrel area while you're lapping. So this is the lap after it's been removed from the barrel. As you can see... The cotton twine down here not only helps center your cleaning rod in the bore, but also acts as a barrier for the lead to not go back any further into the lance. That is a properly casted lap. That's what it should look like. Then when you're done with it, just melt it off and rinse and repeat. So now that we're done lapping, it's time to do a little bit of polishing. Because there are going to be some marks in here. You know, I only lap this barrel down about 600 grit. And it's that's going to suffice. It'll be fine. But we want to get any type of hard scoring marks out. And we want to kind of polish up our work just a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to reinstall our bore guide. We are going to take some of our metal polish. Any uh, metal glow, like uh, this is this brand is uh, United Cutlery. They work great. Um, Auto Sol Paste is another great alternative to a metal. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of this metal polishing paste and just put it on a patch. And then smear this paste around on this patch with our hand. And uh, then just run it through the bore on a jag and start polishing. And of course, this is just going to make our job look that much better. Smooth it out on the inside. Any rough spots, this will help bring out some of those rough spots. And uh, just make the job that much better. You know, another thing with doing lapping, it can actually make cleaning your gun a hundred times easier. Um because it just really helps smooth everything out. But again, I think there's certain factors that have to be met to make a gun a candidate for the lapping process. Now, what I'm doing right here, you can do this at home. This is not lapping. This is just polishing, and there's nothing wrong with polishing your bore. So if you want to do this at home, it's not going to hurt anything. Polishing up that bore and, and running some polishing paste down there is going to do nothing but good for it. So don't be afraid to polish your, your bore at home. You know, if you get a good solid three, five minutes of polishing, that's probably sufficient. And then after that, just run patches through until all the black stops coming out. Okay, so now what we're looking at is on the left, we have the before 
once the barrel is clean and on the right we have the after shot once we've lapped and polished one of the things that you're going to see is you're going to see it's the the lapping process is taken most of the circumferential tooling marks in burrs out but there's still some work that could possibly be done you're going to see a few pits you're going to see a few gouges some of the stuff can't come out like I said, this process is not perfect, but it can do a whole lot of good for a rifle barrel. As you see right here on the right side, you still see some of that circumferential tooling, but it's not as consistent as it was. And we've actually been able uh, to pull some of it off of the lands. Um, you're still seeing some, you know, little pits and dings in there, and that's fine. Now we're into the chamber area. Uh, on the right side and that's the chamber over here on the left you're seeing basically what it looked like before uh, up and down the barrel and it's it's just night and day the difference that lapping can make and of course this has also been polished too we're still in the chamber just kind of checking all that out I know it looks pretty rough but that's pretty normal for a chamber if you look down it with your bare eyes it looks smooth as glass So now we're back here into the barrel and again you're just seeing nicely formed lands properly formed lands uh, you are seeing nice smooth areas in between the grooves everything looks pretty well um, there's still a few little pits here and there but for the most part this really helps so as you can see from the after video of what this board looks like inside now compared to what it looked like when we first scoped it Lapping has a huge potential to save a firearms barrel and preserve its accuracy. Is it going to fix every barrel out there? No. But the good thing is, is that with a little hard work and a little elbow grease, you can actually save a barrel that's in really bad condition. Again, I can't stress this enough. Lapping isn't for everybody. Lapping isn't for every gun. Some people are not going to be comfortable with doing it and gunsmiths would be able to do this. Honestly, it's really simple. And you're going off the feel. As you're lapping, you're wanting to feel a consistent motion and pressure throughout the entire bore with the lead lap. Some people are not going to be comfortable in doing that, and some people can even screw up a barrel. The point being is, if your barrel has suffered from rust, corrosion, pitting, all that stuff, lapping is going to be about the best chance you have to save whatever's left of the rifle. At the end of the day, it's not something that needs to be done to every single barrel. Now, you can do it to every single barrel if you want, but just know there's risks out there messing up your gun if you're not careful. Anyways, I hope this was informative and this was helpful. Um, please hit the subscribe button, of course, if you like this video, and I'm sure we're going to have others coming out soon. Also, check us out on the website, thegunsy.com. That's T-H-E-G-U-N-P-S-Y.com. And also check us out on Facebook, The Gun Psychiatrist on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.